Hello and welcome to competency-based assessment in AC and example. This is Dr. Ken. Again, this is a 15-minute segment. It's part two of four. And we're going to be looking at uh, subject slash study guide and seeing the bigger picture. So in this video, we're going to uh, be looking at the subject guide and I use that as a strong framework for the students and how that operates and fits into competency-based assessment. Then we're going to look at the bigger picture, which is really looking at these um, four circles here in the center in a holistic fashion. The uh, last two videos uh, tend to look at each of these segments in slightly different ways, but in this video, we're going to look holistically at these four circles as they come together in how we might go about producing competency-based assessment in AC. So as I said, this is competency-based assessment AC an example, part two of four, and we're looking at uh, the subject guide and seeing the bigger picture of what is happening. I hope you enjoy. So what about the subject unit study guide? So I'm going to give you a little bit uh, deeper insight into how I do that and what it's about. The subject unit uh, guide is a blend of the traditional subject guide and a week by week study guide. First, clear explanation of the learning and resource requirements. Two, session by session explanation of the learning or the assessment is given. Thirdly, 18 week calendar showing what is required each and every week. Four, equation sheets, how to drive your FX100 AU plus calculator. I've even got one in there that shows you how to use a color oscilloscope. Five, when weekly study guide, what to watch, what to read, a place for questions to bring to class some worked examples and practice calcs with answers and some links to learning how to learn to embed that a little more deeply. So the subject unit guide front page doesn't look very much different from any other subject guide that we have. So there's nothing particularly new here, just all the basic unit information, contact details, etc., etc. see are in details just the nuts and bolts that they need to know. Um, there's a session by session guide and you can see here that um, up here in number one, we tell them we're going to do the lab passport, which teaches them how to use the different measuring devices that we have and training aids. Um, we do some learning how to learn which I mentioned we did on the slides. We do Ken's three ways to learn AC, and we do a bit of revision of Ohm's Laws series parallel circuits and things that they need to know. And um, I point them to my cognitive toolbox that uh, is again all about learning how to learn. Then you can see here in the second week, um, so where the first AC lesson actually happens. It's a nice explanation of basically all the things they're going to be learning about, and then we leave them in no doubt. Here's the chapter to read, there's the page number to start on, and here's the chapter sections in the textbook. So there can be no doubt. And then, you know, lesson or session three follows, session four after that, one after the other, and uh, they're all done. So moving down, we have a short form of the assessment and the use of what supplementary evidence is. It takes a while for students to get their heads around it. So I've produced this um, short form. So what I've done firstly is I've put in a table, the first knowledge test, how many questions there are in each of the sections, what the section is about, 
the part of the textbook that they need to study for that particular item. So no trouble there. We then um, tell them about the exercise tutorial, practical books, and how they're going to be used as supplementary evidence for the assessment. And then I just do a short form of the reset policy, just laying out all the steps that are required for knowledge assessments and then all the steps that are required for the skills assessments. So whenever anyone asks, I just refer them back uh, quite often to the um, study guide saying, go read the study guide. You want to know what's in the next test? We don't hide anything from you. It's in the study guide. Just go and read the study guide. It's all there. So the assessment table is a strong study aid for them. It gives the student a good picture of the volume of learning, how much and how hard it's going to be. The formal assessment requirement is too long and dense. And most hear it or don't hear it because I read it to them, but they never actually understand. So that's why I've done this short form part. Then we have the calendar with the full semester laid out again, just uh, forcing them to have uh, no, no excuses. So we have the, the session weeks numbered. We tell them the start date of every Monday of the week. We tell them what is on, what is the physics we're going to be studying that week. We tell them what part of the textbook we're going to be working from. And when we have energy space, we also tell them about the energy space resources that they can use as a secondary thing. But you'll notice the warning that I put here. There's a caveat because I don't follow the energy space content, particularly um, in the order in which it delivers. So I have these nice strong warnings all the way through my documentation. It says if you're going to go and use some energy space content, be warned it doesn't offer it in the same sequence that we do it in class. Next is the actual study guide itself. So we have a week by week study plan. So this page you can see to the right, I've literally repeated 12 times. So I've just shown you one here. So we tell them what it is we're going to be studying, what the general major topics are within it that we're going to be studying. We tell them they can read the textbook and if they want to go down that path, then here's the pages. If they'd rather go to eLearn and watch the videos, we tell them which videos to, to watch. Then we give them a section here where if they have any questions that they can't, don't understand, they need clarification, they can get a space to write those down. Then we have some revision questions for them to do. And you can see here, I've done part of the questions for them in red, just building up their skill. And eventually they have to do the last bit by themselves. And similarly here, and then down here, I've set up a table where they've actually got to work out the different values for Vmax, current and peak to peak voltages, etc. Then a little take off thing to remind them to do the relevant topic quiz out of the exercise tutorials and then finally pointing them to a little bit more learning how to learn that could help them. So again, one for every week. There's just no excuse about how to go about good study habits and good study um, technique. Now the tutorial exercises themselves. The tutorial exercises are partly completed in class. It's a book that I've put together. And like I said earlier, it kind of mimics what we used to do for the theory parts in the front of the TAFE New South Wales books that we used to use. But now we've designed our own. So I tend to help students through every second question for a particular week in class. The expectation is that they complete all the exercises to 
for homework because it's going to play an important role in assessment time. So I mark um, each week whatever the students want to give me. I have a little pigeonhole in my classroom and if they want their tutorial exercise bookmarked or they want their KA3 bookmarked, they can just drop it into the pigeonhole and I will mark it during the lesson while they're often doing their little practical exercises. Um, the front of the book makes it clear that I use this for supplementary evidence and assessment time and I explain in the front of the book as a sheet that explains how it gets used. If a student uh, gets one question or part of a question wrong in the assessment, I will request the exercise tutorial book. If the appropriate section is complete to 100%, I will use this towards um, the question in the assessment and give them um, the, that particular topic area as assessed as successful. So effectively the tutorial exercise, even though it's not mandatory, this is a form of forced study but it's still astonished by how many don't do it and are assessed as not yet successful because they have failed to finish or even do the tutorial exercises at all. So this is just an example of um, one of the pages out of the exercise tutorial book. You can see here, this one's just the first lesson on uh, AC fundamentals and again it's just you know complete the table in this particular case we're learning how to derive the angle and the sine the cos the tan if you're given the cos how do you work back to the angle etc etc then some um, sine wave instantaneous voltage calcs at different angles that they need to work out and the exercise tutorials just follow that pattern and there are 12 sets that are in the exercise tutorial book. So we start them in class time as time allows. They must be completed 100% as homework. Um, what it does is it builds their AC physics skills. It improves their math skills along the way. And very, very importantly, but unfortunately they just don't seem to get it, that it will be used as supplementary evidence for knowledge assessments one and two. The eLearn website, um, the eLearn provides three major components to my overall competency approach to AC. The first is the form, the layout or the feel of the, the site, it simply follows the subject guide. It actually looks like a subject guide in electronic form. This helps to keep the feeling of cohesion around everything that I do in AC. Second is the content for each week is presented in a series of short videos, normally 10 to 25, sometimes 30 minutes average. Also provided are practical demonstration videos that are similar, if not identical, to the ones they do in class. Then finally, I provide a practice assessment video for KA1 and KA2 in the appropriate session positions just before each assessment. The power of these videos is that they not only get the student to do and try and ask and answer questions, I eventually give them a full explanation of the answer, not just the answer. So I get a lot of my best feedback from these particular videos if students take the trouble to go and use them. So a very powerful learning tool are the practice assessment videos. So here's a quick look at what the uh, website just quickly looks like at the moment. So you can see here, this is just week two complex quantities, an indication of where working from a textbook, what the lesson's going to involve, and there's a PDF of my PowerPoint presentations that I use. Then there's maybe one, two, you know, five movies here for them to watch, then the practical demo, and for people who hate to read or do things, uh, we've also got some maths that uh, Darren's done and produced some videos that's also available to them. You can see here week three um, follows exactly the same pattern, uh, PDFs, 
three movies to watch, a prac and a workbook narrated section. Um, we get to our assessment week and here's the first assessment week. I couldn't fit it all on the screen so I just did the bottom uh, section of it for you. So we have AC Exam 1. It's just a PDF. If you'd like to download the PDF and just work through the questions, there are no answers, but the questions are there. And then if you want to watch the test or do the test, um, I've broken it up into three small videos. Rather than have to watch one great big video that's an hour and a half long, you can watch it in three 30-minute sections. And again, this is the real power of what I do on eLearn. Um, asking a question, they pause the video, they have a go at the answer, they continue the video on, I give them the answer, and then I do a full explanation of how I got to the answer using this very tool that I'm using now. And, um, you know, I'm able to do P equals things like I squared R. So I explain the maths, I draw circles around things, I do all that kind of stuff with the cursor control. Next tip for now, thank you for watching and I hope you got something out of a segment on competency-based assessment in AC with Dr. Ken. All the best. Bye.